my name is Ron Bodum. I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, when I was six, uh, father got a job at Kodak, so we moved to Rochester, New York, where I went to uh, school and up through high school. <clears throat> went to a small liberal arts college for one year uh, at Nazareth College in Rochester, New York. Then I transferred to a uh, bigger city, so then I went to Boston University. I uh, got my under, undergraduate degree or my BFA from Boston University and uh, at that point decided to spend a year abroad studying where we are right now in Florence, Italy. Uh, at that point, uh, after my year abroad, uh, I returned to Boston University where I got my uh, Master's of Fine Arts, uh, two-year degree, and then at the age of 28, uh, came back to Florence and, and started this sculpture program where we are today. It was actually a friendship and a visit to visit a friend of mine who was at Boston University that, that made me make up my mind. And my, when I was in Nazareth College, I took my spring break and I uh, went to visit him and had a fantastic time in, in a big city, lots of excitement. Uh, anything a 19-year-old, 18-year-old young man seems to appreciate. So, and coincidentally, that friendship is also what brought me here because uh, he was my best friend, his, his name was Jamin, and he is the son of the, the director and the founder of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't involved in the arts, but he, once again, was when I went to visit him, when I got a taste of Boston, when uh, at that same moment I'm thinking about transferring, uh, that trip was, was the nail in the coffin of sorts to go, let's go to Boston University. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went there and I had to, they didn't accept me, they didn't accept my full academic year of college, so I had to be a freshman again. But yet with this friendship, and he, my friend was, Jamin was living off campus, that we made a decision to live together. And I just remember the big kind of problem that Boston University had a policy that they didn't want their freshmen to live off campus. Uh, so I had to go through this whole kind of process to make, to, for them to understand that I had been through a freshman year, I've lived on campus, I've had that experience. So when I was a freshman in college at Boston University, again, uh, I uh, was living off campus and having a wonderful time. And I met a lot of great people. You know, I, f there's definitely uh, a couple of people that were good friends of mine in the arts that I kept in touch with. Interestingly enough, my other friends in Boston University, uh, certain roommates I've had over time, uh, we're all in the, the finance, you know, or the economy programs in, in the university, and there were many of them were European. I had some Italian friends. I had uh, a roommate of mine who was from Mumbai. Back then, they still called it Bombay. Uh, you know, I had friends from Greece. I had friends from all over the world. And, and even at Boston University, it's an international place. Boston's a quite an international city. So that was also where I was getting my first tastes of different cultures. And, and, uh, that was also quite exciting about my time there. When I came to Florence, and there was a methodology to the teaching here that uh, was quite clear, and it, there was a progression that was taught that you take yourself through in, in your work in the model room. And it's when you're learning it, it's it, it's cumbersome. It's not so clear. But you know, when you have a good teacher like Daniel Graves was to me, he would come by and he would set you back where you needed to be and what you needed to focus on. And you know, you lose sight of that obviously over time. But so for the first time when I was a student at the Florence Academy of Art, I was doing more drawing than anything else. And I was uh, starting to achieve some of those things that had always eluded me and frustrated me as a student in Boston. So I became, started became quite more personally satisfied with my work here. And I started to realize as well that there were certain things in the arts that you could teach. You know, that there was practical approaches to things that were quite helpful, you know. And being in a more open, free art environment in Boston, that uh, even though the woman who I spent a lot of time studying with had a methodology to how to approach the figurative sculpture, uh, most everything else I was doing didn't have one. It was kind of it's just explore. We'll tell you what we, we'll tell you what you think we think when we're done, when you're done. So anyway, there was a tremendous amount of satisfaction. There was it's a lot of hard work trying to execute a, a competent uh, figure drawing, figurative sculpture, and and that started to light kind of a passion. Uh, I like to build things, and I like to build things well. You know, if I was to wake up one day and want to build a chair, which happens, I would 
want to build it well. And so there was something about building a, you know, sculpture is a lot about building. And, and my subject, which is the, is the figure, uh, there, there's something about it. There's a distinction about if it's done well. Yeah. I mean, one of the things about deciding to come here, there wasn't a sculpture program. And so I came here and the school had found a building. <laughs> uh, walked into it, there was nothing in it. Mm -hmm. And that's how it got started. It was the first mm -hmm. expansion of the Florence Academy of Art uh, that was previously in one building. Now there's about five in Florence, there's one in Sweden, and there's now one in New York. So there's been a rapid expansion of the school since then. But it was the sculpture program was the first expansion. Uh, started very slowly uh, with very few students. Uh, um, you know, there's. I mean, there's been so much about it, it's hard to focus on, on little smaller elements to it. But it, uh, I, I think I realized when I was starting here that I could kind of work my way through a sculpture, but I don't know how well I was at teaching people how to do that. So, mm -hmm. you know, there was definitely the stumbling blocks. I wanted to offer people good advice. I had strong ideals about education and, um, you know, students, you know, tuition and, and what you're offering. So I uh, was always going to be quite determined about, or trying to be quite determined about offering uh, people as much as I could. And I've had, I, I mean, I, you know, one can say that, you know, I've been fortunate with, with a lot of talented, driven people, and that's definitely the case. And one can say that uh, it was fortunate that talented, driven people had also come and found uh, this program. It, there was very few places in the world where you can study figurative sculpture exclusively. And uh, one of the important things about me starting this program was that when I was a student deciding to go and focus on figurative sculpture, there was hardly anything available. Uh, not everyone wants to get a master's degree. I had to go get a master's degree to kind of focus on a higher level with figurative sculpture. So uh, I have a I'm. I, I'm very proud, I couldn't barely even name them all, of the students that have come here and thrived in the environment, succeeded, uh, lots of interesting personal stories uh, about people. Uh, one of my first students had just heard about this school, left high school and uh, made her way to Florence looking for it, didn't even know where it was physically, uh, stumbled into some high school somewhere who uh, <laughs> gave her an idea about where to find this school and eventually found it uh, and is is one of the leading contemporary figurative sculptors out there today with you know works in museums uh, with traveling exhibitions that uh, are currently ongoing in, in order to improve the work in order to you know get your punctuation to work and get your sentences to flow better and all these kinds of things and so uh, once again that's just the part of sculpting with the figure and that as I help my students, as I teach my students to be better editors of their work and I help them edit their work that when I'm needing to do that myself, it goes so much faster. Mm. Yeah. So teaching feeds back into my own studio in invaluable ways that, that I can't even, you know, it's, it's hard to even describe. So it gets in my way as far as time, but one could, I could probably also equate the idea that the work that I, the time that I spend with my students doing this, that that probably maybe even cuts off more time into my own process that I work in. So anyway, it's reciprocal relation. So about my own personal work, uh, that is a word I use quite a lot is also evolving. And it's hard to, as a, as a 20 year old and you know I, I think back to myself when I was 20 and thinking I had this kind of path that I knew I was going to take uh, and that kept changing direction and I you know that it's nice to sit there and sort of conclude yourself well I'm going to do this and you set out on this path to try to accomplish things and the, the longer I'm involved in the arts uh, the less and less and less I think I have a uh, this clear kind of defining thing about what I need to do with my work that uh, whether it goes to what it needs to say or what it doesn't need to say that uh, my work once again goes to these constant evolutions that uh, as 
I was pointing out to you that you know sometimes a broken sculpture that was an accident can become more exciting than maybe the completed sculpture had been. And so you know th this kind of thing it's it's a little bit interesting to me about how things do also come full circle uh, at least at this point in my career and I would never ever feel that I need I would set out a definition for myself and say this is what I'm going to do and this is what I'm, I'm always going to do and this is what it's always going to look like and uh, because that's changed so much but when I was appreciating abstraction I appreciated the fact that there wasn't uh, a distinct narrative to it that people could come up to the work and appreciate it on different levels.